Hey guys, Steve here. Today's message is titled, Jesus Takes Away the Sin of the World. What great news. So, in John 1, 29, it says, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Now, <clears throat> because we are human, we cannot understand that God says he will forgive all of our sins. Not just our sins before we accept, accepted him, but all of our sins until the end of time. Forgiveness of sins for many Christians means the day you receive Jesus, the day you were born again, all of your sins were paid up to that point. We cannot comprehend when God says all, he means all sins for our whole life. He can see our past, present, and all of our future sins. He says, all of your sins are put on my son. When Jesus said finished, he meant everything was accomplished. When he sat down at the right hand of God, he was done his work. It's hard for us to comprehend that, isn't it? It's just, it's too big. In addition to saying he took our sins away, he says he blots them out. He casts them into the depths of the sea. He separates them as far as the east is from the west. And he says he will remember them no more. In Colossians 2, 13 and 14, he says, And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinance, ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Uh, my, and that's the King James. Micah 7, 19 in the 1995 New American Standard Bible. And the reason I picked that is because it says sins. So we can kind of understand that more than we can understand like iniquities. It says, he will again have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. Yes, you will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. In Psalms 103, verse 12, it says, He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. And Psalm 103, I don't know if you read verse 1 through 5 of that, it's a, it's a great passage that tells us all of our benefits, that he forgiveth all of our iniquities. He heals all of our diseases. And three other things, five actions of grace, benefits of grace in the first five verses of Psalm 103, in addition to here, removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. Then in Hebrews 10, 17, he says, I will never again remember their sins and lawless deeds. So in in, not Hebrews, in Hebrews 10, 2 and 4, it says, For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because, and he's talking about the sacrifices that the Israelites did for their sins. They did it once a year, as you know, on the day of Yom Kippur, because that the worshipers once purged. So he's talking about us once purged, cleaned, sins took away. That's the, that's the perfect passive participle. One act never to be repeated. Sins taken away. Because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. We should not even be thinking about them. We should be thinking about what he gave us. And that is the gift of righteousness, eternal life all sins removed. Um, the gift of righteousness is called salvation. And as you know, if you've listened to my videos, that's based on the Greek word soteria, 
which is everything we need in this world plus everything we need in the next world. So that's health, healing, wholeness, completeness, provision, and then in the next life, our glorified bodies and eternal life. Isn't that great news? No more conscience of sin, but in those sacrifices, and it's talking about the Israelites, the Hebrews here, but in those sacrifice, sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. And then it tells us why, for it is not pos possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. So it tells us the Lamb of God takes away sins, but the blood of bulls and goats only paid for sins for one year. Don't forget, Jesus did not come to make bad people good. He came to make, to make us alive. He came to make us, before we knew him, dead in our sins, alive. And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all, capital A-L-L, -L, all our trespasses, Colossians 2.13. What do you think God means when he says, having forgiven all your trespasses? Does that mean that God's forgiveness is from the day you were born until the day you received Jesus, whether you were 30 years old or 40 years old or 60 years old or on your deathbed? Is that God's all? Only from one outside of time can you be forgiven all sins, past, present, and future. As you know, it says that in Romans 5, 1 and 2. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then it talks about all that's all sins present. Then it talks about that's past. Then it talks about all sins present. And then it talks about rejoicing in hope of the glory, all sins future. So picture God. And I've told this story before, but you know what a drone looks like or a helicopter looks like. Pretend like you're at the Magic Kingdom and there's a parade going by and that parade is your life. And so at the beginning, there may be some sins. That drone can go there and see those forgiven. He can go here to right now, look down, see these sins forgiven. He can go into the future and see those sins we don't even know forgiven, all sins taken away forgiven. And um, then they said unto him, they said unto Jesus, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Because so many people are about doing works and repenting of your sin. We've covered all your sin is forgiven. What must we do to do the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them in John 6, 28 and 29, this is the work of God that ye believe on him whom he has sent. Now, I don't understand that. I don't understand how growing in our belief of what Jesus has done for us is a work of God, but he loves when we grow in our believing in him. And if we look in the Amplified Classic version of that, Jesus replied, This is the work, service, that God asks of you, that you believe in the one he has sent. And then it's got brackets that you cleave to, trust, rely on, and have faith in his messenger. He expands on that, believe on him whom he has sent. I wanted to share those verses with you about all your sin being taken away. Now, if all of your sin taken away, uh, one of the benefits is, is that you are passed from death unto life. As it says in John 5, 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Something has happened when you believe that. You are passed from death unto life. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. In John 10, 28, Jesus said, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. <clears throat> we may go to sleep, but we will never perish. No one will snatch us out of his hand. No one will snatch them out of my hand. And in John 6, 40, he says, And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Now, I will put these verses in the notes below so that you can print them out and, and read over them. When you're having a bad day, get these scriptures out and just meditate on them. They will be medicine unto your flesh. They, they will increase your hope. And I hope you guys have a great day. This is Steve. Talk to you later.